example 2c, we are trying to solve the equation the natural log of x plus 1 is equal to the natural log of x plus 9 minus the natural log of x. So this is a logarithmic equation. You see the equal sign and there are logarithms involved. They are all the same base. They're all base E or natural logarithms, okay? So we have logarithms on both sides of the equation. So we're gonna try to make it so that we have a single logarithm on either side of the equal sign, okay? So on the left side, I just have one logarithm. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay, but on the right, I have two logarithms and I want to condense those into one logarithm. Okay, so I've got both are natural logs, so it'll combine into one natural log and we're subtracting them. So we know that subtraction turns into division. So the right side is going to be the natural log of the numerator is going to be the first quantity x plus 9. The denominator is going to be the second quantity x. Okay, so that's how we condense the logarithms on the right side into one natural log. Okay, that leaves us with a single logarithm on either side of the equal sign. I have one natural log equal to one natural log. So the only way this can be a true statement for the left side to equal the right side is if the natural log of the sum, if we're doing the natural log of the something is equal to the natural log of something, the somethings have to be the same. Okay, so x plus 1 needs to be the same as x plus 9 over x. So we're going to set those quantities equal to each other. x plus 1 has to equal x plus 9 over x. Now we need to solve this for x. Okay, so again, it's a little tricky because we have a fraction involved, but we've seen something like this before. So the little trick to get rid of the fraction is to, let me see here, give me, give me a second, I need more room. So let me just rewrite what we have. We have x plus one is equal to x plus nine over x. So I'm gonna eliminate the fraction. So since I have an x in the denominator, I'm gonna multiply by x, then I'll have an x in the top and it will cancel with the one in the bottom. But if I multiply the right side by x, I need to multiply the left side by x, okay? so. On the left side, we're going to end up with x times the entire quantity x plus 1. So I need parentheses here because the x has to be distributed amongst the whole quantity x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here and put parentheses. Okay, all right. On the right side, the x in the bottom cancels with the x in the top. So we're going to just be left with x plus 9. Okay, fractions are gone. Okay. So let's figure this out. We've got to solve for x. Uh, your instinct probably says, let's distribute. Okay, so let's distribute. On the left, you're going to get x squared plus x is equal to x plus 9. Okay, and so um, we need to solve this equation now. It is, the fractions are gone. It is quadratic. The highest power of x is 2. Okay, so we need to put everything on one side or uh, we need to put everything on one side in order to use the quadratic formula or to factor, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and move the x over, okay? So I'm gonna subtract x from both sides, okay? This is going to tell me that x squared, okay? These x's cancel on the left, x minus x is zero. They also cancel on the right, x minus x is zero. So we're gonna get x squared is equal to nine. Okay, so I've actually got something squared is equal to a number. So this is actually pretty easy to solve. You don't have to move everything over. Okay, you can just go ahead and take the square root of both sides. But remember, you need to put a plus or minus out front. That's something we learned very early on in the semester. Anytime you have something squared is equal to, no to a number, you need to take the square root of both sides and don't forget the plus or minus on the number piece. Okay, so this tells us the square and the square root will cancel leaving x x can be plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so we have two potential solutions. We need to go check them out in the original equation. Okay, again, we're worried about taking the logarithm of something negative or of 0. Okay, let's check positive 3 first. If I plug that into the original equation for x, I'm going to get the natural log of 3 plus 1. That's equal to the natural log of 3 plus 9 minus the natural log of 3. Okay, that's okay. We get natural log of 4 is equal to natural log of 12 
minus natural log of three. Okay, so we end up getting, uh, we end up getting, uh, we're taking the logarithm of something positive every single time. So that is okay. Okay, so moving on, I need to check negative three. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in negative three for X. I'm gonna get the natural log of negative three plus one equals the natural log of negative three plus nine minus the natural log of negative three. Okay, as soon as you see this, you can't do it. Okay, right here, you're taking the natural log of a negative number, that's bad. On the first piece here, this would be the natural log of negative two if you simplified it, can't do it, okay? So basically here, out of the two sol solutions, only x equals positive three is a viable solution, okay? So you have to exclude x equals negative three, okay? So here is the only solution, okay? All right, let's try the next one. Example D is gonna be a little different, okay? So just at a first glance, our logarithms are gonna be base seven. We're trying to figure out what value or values of X make this a true statement. We've got two times the natural log of seven, or sorry, let me start over. Two times log base seven of X is equal to three times log base seven of four, okay? Again, you're trying to figure out what value or values of X make this true. Both logarithms are base seven. You've got a logarithm on either side. Um, so again, we need to have, we're, we're aiming for a situation where we have one logarithm is equal to one logarithm and they're the same base, okay? We almost have that. The problem is these numbers in front, okay? We have two times a logarithm is equal to three times a logarithm. We don't simply have logarithm equals logarithm. So we need to handle these numbers that are multiplied out front, okay? So we need to think back to those big properties of logarithms we learned, okay? Remember what happens if you have a number in front, okay? So this is gonna be the third major property. If you have a number multiplied in front of a logarithm, you're allowed to move that power, that number up as the power of the quantity you're taking the logarithm of, okay? So that's what we're going to use here, okay? So if we do that on the left side, that two that's in front, we can go ahead and move it up as the power on X, okay? So we're gonna get log base seven of X squared, okay? We're gonna do the same thing on the right side. This three, we're gonna move it up as the power on the four. So the right side is gonna be log base seven of four cubed, okay? Now we have one base seven logarithm equal to another base seven logarithm, okay? One single logarithm on either side. The only way a base lo seven logarithm of something is equal to a log base seven of something else is if the somethings are equal, okay? So that means the X squared is gonna have to equal to the four cubed, okay? So X squared has to equal four cubed, okay? We can figure out what four cubed is. Four times four is 16 times four is 64. Okay, so now we need to solve this for x. Again, we have something squared is equal to a number. So all we have to do, even though this is quadratic, we don't have to factor or use the quadratic formula. We just need to take the square root of both sides and put a plus or minus out front on the number piece, okay? So your potential solutions here, the square and the square root cancel, x can be plus or minus the square root of four is, or sorry, the square root of 64 is eight, okay? So plus and minus eight, are your potential solutions, okay? We need to do a check inside the original equation here, okay? So let's check x equals positive eight first. We're gonna have two times log base seven of eight is equal to three times log base seven of four, okay? Again, we're not checking to see if this is completely correct. It should be. We're worried about plugging in one of these solutions and taking the logarithm of a negative number or of zero, okay? But here, you are taking the logarithm of eight, that's positive. Here, you're taking the logarithm of four, that's positive. So you're cool there. As far as negative eight goes, if you plug negative eight in for X in the original equation, you're gonna get two times 
log base 7 of negative 8. Okay, as soon as you do that, that's bad, bad, bad. You're taking the logarithm of a negative number. Okay, so you need to exclude negative 8 as the solution. Okay, so this is extraneous. X equals positive 8 is the only solution. Okay, so I will write down here our solution to our original equation is X equals positive 8. And that is it for this one.